Hey y'all, Scott here. Guess how many Wii plays have resold in my lifetime? Enough. Not for resale. Well, I'm stuck with these things. Might as well get comfortable. I think we've all come across a game in our collection with this on it. Not for resale. I bought this used. Who f***ed up? Yeah, whenever I saw one of these labels as a kid, I thought it held the same value as one of those mattress tags you're legally not allowed to rip off. Or those silica gel packets that say, don't throw away, eat. Oh, sh**. But not for resale always eluded me because I almost exclusively obtained not for resale games from resellers. So what does it truly mean? Well, most not for resale games were included in bundles, whether it was a console bundle, a controller bundle, hell, if it was merely just in an outer box. Most of the time, the UPC code scanned would be on that outer shell, so this is a way to avoid people harvesting product bundles and trying to return a part of it to make some money. Hence, not for resale. However, many not for resale releases aren't meant to be sold to the public, so those are labeled as such as well. And listen, I have a whole treasure trove of them I bought off eBay. Police! Oh, God damn it! One of the first not for resale games that comes to mind is the original Sonic the Hedgehog. It won't come off. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky to find a copy of the game without the label on the front because it was sold with so many Sega Genesis consoles. Sonic 2 suffered a similar fate, though at least its label isn't nearly as egregious. But see, this is generally what not for resale games look like. Obviously, I prefer the label not be there, but what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? These games are caked. This is a sticker that was applied to original Xbox titles purchased within Microsoft's company store, so the store within their office building. That makes these really cool collectibles. It's just the thought they were within the Microsoft company walls. But to be fair, I mean, how far does that mentality take you? It's not like Bill Gates himself sold this game, so collecting these would be opening up a whole new can of worms. This is my copy of Elbits. This is my copy of Elbits from Kentucky. I mean, this company has nearly 200,000 employees. It's not like this is that exclusive of a variant, but still kind of cool. Oh, oh my God, this sticker is medically bonded to the case. There's no way you're getting this off. It's like the metallic NFL stickers on games. You ever successfully peel one of these off? No, because you're depressed. So imagine two of these on one case. That's fucked up. However, these don't say not for resale. They specify they're not to be sold. You know, it's concerning that has that label, but I don't. So the Microsoft company purchases aren't supposed to leave the company. Why? I mean, there's no difference between this copy of the game and this one. Just the plastic case, and that's completely swappable. At least some not for resale games have every right to not leave the premises, like these. Demo Kiosk Games. The only way you're owning these is if your name's Walmart. I've always wanted a crisis that was existential. Back in the day, oh, sometimes even now, you'll see systems set up in stores playing demos of games with controllers only a mother could love. Most of these would be rocking multi-game demo discs where you could select a demo to play or it would cycle through trailers while idle. These right here are single game demos with barely anything denoting that except for a lone not for resale icon. You'd think it would say demo or kiosk edition or anything other than not for resale, which is what you'd see on some games meant to be available to the public, like those Sonic 1 and 2 copies. But when Mario Tennis says it and I own it, like, you think I'm wearing a bulletproof vest for nothing? These releases feel dirty to own. Like, like how is this the timeline we're in? Seeing these games run on anything but a store kiosk is incredibly surreal, but tends to be a huge power trip. Like, damn, my bedroom's a Kmart. Go ahead. Me. It's so cool to own these not for resale kiosk games because they genuinely feel like a forbidden fruit. Take, for example, this Nintendo DS Pokemon cartridge for Celebi distribution. Didn't we have an assembly about this? Ah, there are lots of not for resale Pokemon cartridges meant for in store use only to distribute unique Pokemon to customers that visit with their Pokemon games. But of course, with most of these store promotions being pretty damn over, if I need my Celebi fix, I own the cartridge, I'm good. Up it, up it, up it, up it, up. Actually, this can be fixed by changing your system's clock to a date in which this specific distribution event would have been going on. Why restrict distribution if it can be cheesed so easily? It's really great that these events were handled in this way because all these years later, you can still get these Pokemon.
after selling your dad. But well, these not for resale cartridges are a special case. If we want something a little more traditional, we have numerous demo cards available, but this one right here, this one is for the history books. A not for resale demo kiosk cartridge for Mario Kart DS, interestingly using an older logo from development. In addition to that, while playing the game, you can see an item that didn't make it to the final release pop up, the Chain Chomp from Double Dash. It's not actually usable in the demo, but the icon is here, and that alongside the beta logo is enough to warrant my new fugitive status. Many of these cards contain specific information regarding the store they were sent to because they were meant to be sent back to Nintendo once they were done being used. Somebody must have been shot for me to own this. But hey, sometimes it may be worth it. These not for resale cards across gaming history can range from being worth peanuts to really expensive expensive peanuts. I feel that it mostly has to do with the legacy of the title in question, any content that didn't make it to the final release being present in the demo version, or none of the above. I paid $250 to break the law. You know, murdering someone's cheaper. You know what's the lamest thing about these not for resale cartridges on Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64? They mostly aren't even special demo versions. They're the full retail releases. There is no difference between playing Stunt Race FX and Stunt Race FX not for resale. So then what's the point of owning these? It for sure can be pretty cool to experience the in-store demos of games from back in the day. Uh, something as simple as a level select exclusive to that version or text telling you the game is coming soon can be incredibly novel to see these days. It's almost like you've traveled back in time when you play these since they weren't meant to be experienced outside of the year they were released in. But most of these not for resale cartridges aren't that. They were used for demo purposes, yes, but there's no differences in the games themselves, and oftentimes the label isn't even different enough to warn people thinking you're f***ing cool. Wow, my Banjo-Kazooie states not for resale in fine print. Yeah, well, so does my copy of Uncharted 1, and Detroit Become Human, and Ring Fin Adventure, and Super Mario Maker, and Nintendo Switch Sports, so why spend $150 on this? Well, because of the historic value. That? I'm gonna keep this cancerous mole. I'm a historian. Hey, listen, I get it. I love wasting cash on things that only really have value to me. What's better than investing your money? Not. Nah. I just find the not for resale cartridges on these consoles to be only really for the most die hard of collectors out there, considering how the only difference is the not for resale text and sometimes a sticker on the back denoting how this is for stores. Sometimes you get a little bit more to these, like how Donkey Kong 64 has a not for resale version in a standard gray cartridge instead of the yellow one the retail release shipped in. And even though I'm colorblind and can't appreciate the differences, I'm happy to say I own this incredibly rare version. Yeah, nearly two grand for great Donkey Kong. At the very least, this is one of the few not for resale cartridges that is a demo, it's not just the full game, so there is significantly more value to this as a piece of gaming history. The value lies in significantly less content. So that's pretty much the different types of not for resale releases. Either they were bundled in with consoles, accessories, or even other games, or they were meant for store demo kiosks. And it can be pretty confusing considering some not for resale games everybody owned. They're nothing special, they're dirt cheap, while others are the crown jewels of their respective console libraries. So let's play a little game here to really get down to what makes a not for resale title expensive. Welcome to Cheap or Steep. Yes, finally an effective use for two minutes. This is Cheap or Steep. The game show hell bent on lacking purpose. Now onto our next order of business, contestants. That's how it's pronounced. Do not contest ants. Terry Lessler. Hey, great to be here. Big fan of answers. Glad to support the cause. Geriatrics. I eat question marks till just the period's left. And. Jeb Jab! It's pronounced me. Well, I hope you all prepared for the afterlife being all you can look forward to after this. Our buzzer budget ran out, so we bought everybody guns instead. The answer's true! Our first game is Fable 3, not for resale. Is it cheap or steep? I think I'm gonna go with steep on this one. Oh, I am sorry. It is $5. It is cheap. Anybody else think they got the answer? Is the answer cheap? No, it's perfectly fair. Next up is The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past Not for Resale on Game Boy Advance. Is it cheap or steep? <laughs> cheap? The answer is around $22, which I don't know about your thoughts on the economy. I love it. But to some people, that's pretty steep. I mean, it is just a demo after all. Any other takers? Steep? <laughs> that's your opinion. And now we're on to the final game. 
The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask Gray Not For Resale Game Cartridge. Is it cheap or steep? Steep! Incorrect. The answer is f***ing steep. There's no correlation. I mean, what about this Blu-ray included with PlayStation 3 consoles? This is not for resale. Basically, this one includes a bunch of trailers for games, plus movies to push the Blu-ray format in the PS3 as a player. But it also includes a free game. That's an amazing bonus. So this not for resale product is about $5 these days. But this not for resale product, which is the same damn thing, but without the free game... These are so confusing! They're either something everybody has, or nobody does. And now for resale is such a meaningless thing plastered on so many video games that confuses consumers more than anything. As so many people ask, oh, what, so I can't resell this? No, of course you can. This is a warning for the stores. But it's not obvious, which begs the question, is it time for a new phrase? It's been time.